of Wren Citizen. Suddenly, somehow or other, we go magically down to becoming a United States citizen. How does that happen? Birth certificate. Birth certificate, social security number, driver's license, voter's registration card. You ever look at your voter registration card? Are you a United States citizen? Yes or no? Oh yeah, I'm a United States citizen. Oh boy, you have no rights. We the people have a right to keep and bear arms. A United States citizen has to get a concealed carry permit. We the people have a right to travel. A United States citizen has to get a driver's license. We the people can get married to anybody we want. A United States citizen has to get a marriage license. Those are all prima facie evidence of your subordinate status to Congress. The trick is getting rid of all of that. Since that says um, born or naturalized in the United States with capital letters, wouldn't that be places they have, like D.C. and the territories only? That's right. So it, the United States, there's, I have a, another document that I literally just printed off the web yesterday. I'm constant. Again, there's too much information, so I keep adding more. Um, but I, I downloaded a document that talks about the uh, United States, the United States, and the United States of America, three different entities, and the citizenships of each of those. And I, I would have added in the book, uh, best I can do is to give you the website before we leave. So then the 14th doesn't apply to sovereign Texans. If you are a sovereign Texan, you are not a United States citizen. Okay. You never ever want to say, yes, I'm a United States citizen, because you are admitting that you are subordinate to Congress. I am not a United States citizen. I am a Texan. So what if you, you want to vote? So how do you... You become an elector. Did they just change the Constitution? What's that? Did they just change the Constitution two years ago to wipe that word out? Oh, did they? Yeah, two years Let's ago. See, I didn't, I didn't know that they had. So they're, they're trying to close doors on us before we, before we they're finally get there. trying to say there. it's the same as a voter, right. which is not. It's not. Uh, so, United States citizen is different than a state citizen. A state citizen has rights protected by the Bill of Rights. A United States citizen basically has equal protection under the law. You want equal protection? That guy's got a ball and chain. You want to be equal? <laughs> it's, it just says that it's equal. It doesn't say that it was good. So we're going to give you a ball and chain too. That way everybody's equal. Now, on my passport... I have I have reproduced the, what it says. It says the Secretary of State of the United States of America hereby requests all to whom it may concern to permit the citizen slash national of the United States. What does it mean when you have two words divided by a slash? One or the other. One or the other. You can be boy slash girl. You can be Democrat slash Republican. One or the other. You can be citizen slash national. So this, this passport will work for a United States citizen, but it will also work for a United States national. They don't tell you what that is, but on my passport it shows that they are different. Now what is a national? A person owning, owning permanent allegiance to the state. The term national, as used in the phrase national of the United States, is broader than the term citizen. So a, uh, a rectangle can be a square, but a square is not necessarily a rectangle. A rectangle is a broader term. So if you are a national, it is a broader term than the word citizen. So it is possible for you to be a national and not be a United States citizen. Shh, don't tell anybody. We wouldn't want you to be able to exercise your rights. Now, um, in the reference that I gave you before, the USA, the House, the Republic, is the USA, the Republic is the house that no one lives in, is the document. 
and this is a short subset, and it says the 14th Amendment is a setback to proper government. It runs counter to the ideals expressed in the preamble to the Constitution itself. The, Con the 14th Amendment is mm -hmm. also probably never properly ratified. So the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments are uh, post-war amendments that gave... Uh, basically gave Congress a lot of power. Presumably the North over the South, but we've managed to exacerbate that into being even worse. Article 5 of the Constitution. The Founding Fathers realized they were not omniscient. They knew that we would have to change it. So Article 5 is all about amending the Constitution. How do you go about changing it? Well, the first thing that you have to do is propose an amendment. How can you propose an amendment? Either two-thirds of both houses or two-thirds of the state conventions. Do we have to have Congress? No. We can get each state to hold a convention and if you get two-thirds of those conventions to say, yes, we want this you know, proposal, then it is proposed. You can bypass Congress. We, the people, still have some power. We just have to get our act together and get organized. Now, once a, an amendment has been proposed, how does it become ratified? The states. Three-quarters of all the states. So, so you need, so you need uh, three quarters of the state legislatures. It's true. Mm -hmm. So you need a super majority. You can bypass that too if you have Knox on your side. Oh <laughs> yes, yes, and, and we will talk about that. Uh, you can also have three quarters of the state conventions. We can bypass the state legislature, have a convention, and if three quarters of the peoples in the states want it, then the amendment is also ratified. But it's two-thirds or 66 percent to propose it and 75 percent to, to ratify it. They deliberately made it hard. They didn't want it to be real easy. Um, number five, article five, is on page 35. It says, all date debts and engagements shall be valid. Why did they have to put that in? Why is that in on Article 5. Could we back up just a minute? Sure. Okay, in, in this Article 5 down here at the bottom, it says, uh, no state without its consent shall deprive, be deprived of its equal suffrage in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And yet, they passed an amendment in which some states, it would have had to have been unanimous for it to be legal. And some states did not pass it, so they lost their suffrage without their consent. Then it's unconstitutional. You, well, which which act are you referring to? I'm talking about, oh, it's over here where the senators are, senators are elected by the populace. Oh, the seven, 17th Amendment. Yes, uh -huh. we, we're, we're going to talk about the 17th Amendment okay. very shortly. Okay. Um, Article 6 says that all debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of the Constitution shall be valid. So we were changing governments. We were under the Articles of Confederation, and we owed a bunch of money to France and Spain for, you know, helping us out. So when we go to the new constitution, we say, well, we're going to be good guys and we're going to, you know, continue our debt. We're not just going to repudiate the debt. Um, but basically, it says all laws pursuant to the constitution uh, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority shall be the supreme law of the land. So the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and any law notwithstanding is invalid, is unconstitutional. So Texas can make any law that it wants, except a law that would legalize slavery, you know, or, or otherwise violate your rights. Uh, so, uh, oh, and then it's also said that all persons... Uh, senators, are, senators and members of the several state legislatures and all executive